guys. Another wonderful edition of Patio Productions for our pre-calc lesson. Um, I have worn this shirt for three lessons in a row. I just decided to knock all those babies out in one day while I was thinking about limits. And um, that's what we're going to do. So let's get right to it. Okay, let's get right to it. Um, our lesson for today is the third installment for section 16-2. Okay, so this is our third installment talking about like limits and what we can do with our fun limits and it's so fun and exciting and and so what we're going to talk about today for our third um installment is actually just like one topic and it's not even on the screen but we're going to talk about this idea of something called content continuity okay so continuity oh i know that does deserve an ooh. okay so continuity is is something that you're going to say about a function being continuous or like not continuous okay and we're going to talk about what would what makes a function be continuous how to make a function be continuous all sorts of amazing things okay so we're just going to sort of jump right into it so what would make a, a, a function be continuous like i think if i was thinking about a continuous function i might describe it in sort of like like layman's terms like okay when i draw something, I'm not picking up my pencil. When I draw a line, it's continuous. If I draw a parabola, it's um, it's continuous. But if I draw so a sine wave or a cosine, totally continuous. Okay, but you know what's not continuous? Like a tangent graph. You know what's not continuous? Like a function, like a one over X, where it like swoops and then it comes down and goes like this. Those are not continuous. So, if the thinking definition is you don't pick up your pencil, there's no holes in the graph, what's like the mathematical definition of a continuous function, okay? So here's going to be a more formal definition of what a continuous function is, okay? And we're going to write down all the rules. There's sort of like three parts to something being continuous, and so we're really going to like focus on the three parts, okay? So, yep, three parts. Super amazing, super fun, super great. Okay, so here's the formal definition. It says a function f of x is continuous at x equals c. A function f of x is continuous at x equals c if and only if. That's what IFF stands for, if and only if. Okay, and then there are three things that happen. One thing that happened is that f of x is defined at x equals c. Okay, in other words, there is a coordinate, okay? So at whatever the x value is, there is a y dot that matches with it, okay? So for your own self, you're going to think to yourself, okay, check it out. This means that there is a point, okay? So this means that there is a point. So you're writing down that f of x is defined at x equals c, and you're writing a note to yourself that that means there is a coordinate at that x value. Part two of this definition says that the limit, okay, as X approaches C of F of X exists, okay? So whatever the X value is, you're coming in, you're doing your target from both directions. Notice that this does not say, okay, from the right or from the left. It's from both sides now. So you're going to do it from both sides. And so the limit is going to exist. What makes a function continuous is if your answer to part one and your answer to part two are the exact same numbers. Okay, part three says that they want these two things to be equal. They want the limit as x approaches c of f of x to equal f of c. Okay, so basically when you do one of these limit questions, you're going to be doing three things. You're going to say to yourself, is it defined? Like, is there a dot? Does the limit exist as I'm coming in from the right and from the left? Am I going to the same spot? And is the answer to the first part the same as the answer to the second part? And if it is, dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun, you get to say it is continuous at that coordinate. Woohoo! So fun, so fun. Okay, all three of those things must be met to be continuous. So couple of theorems before we get into a little fun example here. It says polynomial functions are continuous at every real number C. So some of those things that I was mentioning at the beginning, like a parabola or a line, those are polynomial functions. They are, in fact, continuous. Okay. All right. Now, a very typical question for them to ask. And, oh, we are, this is probably example number one. Silly Mrs. Fox, she does weird editing sometimes, okay? So this will be example number one. And so our, this is actually our only example for today. We want to determine if this guy is continuous. And if it's not continuous, then we're going to have to figure out, like, what is, why is it failing, 
okay? This is what we would call a very popular thing for us to do is to do a piecewise function. I know, so fun. So this piecewise function, okay, so this piecewise function, we're gonna say to ourselves, is this guy continuous, okay? So we're gonna have to graph up this piecewise. This is going back to like way, 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 way back two for semester where we remembered how to do our piecewise functions okay so i'm going to get myself a graph pulled up for this so here's my piece of graph paper we're just going to do little bits and pieces at a time okay so for x squared plus two this would be a parabola just a regular old y equals x squared but it's been moved up to but we're only going to do values that are where x is um less than negative one. So there's going to be an open circle and then we're going to go from there. So we're going to have an open circle. Um, if I were filling in all of this guy, I would have like a dot right here. Remember how we did this? And then it was like over one and up one and over one. Up. So it'd be here and here. And then you went over two and up four and you would put a dot over two and up four and we would draw the whole parabola. We'd be like, JK, I don't want to keep the whole parabola. I want to keep one stuff that's less than negative one. And so then we would erase all of that nonsense. And this would just be the part of the graph that we get. So fun. Okay. Then it says at X equals negative one to go ahead and plot the number one. So this is basically saying, I know it looks funny, but at X equals one, we're going to have the coordinate negative one comma one. So we're going to put a dot right there. And then for the next guy, it says uh, it's 2x for x is less than negative 1, okay? So this means that we have a graph. Um, this is the, the function right here. This is the line, uh, just a slope of up 2 and over 1 goes through the origin. There's an open circle at the x value of negative 1. And then this is what this baby looks like. So here's what I'm thinking. You're thinking to yourself, uh, Mrs. Vox, this baby is super not continuous. Like... It's so not continuous. Look at it. Look at the picture. Okay. And I'd be like, you're right. It is. It's not continuous. But why does it fail? So here's the thing. It's not enough to just say, oh, guess what? It's not continuous. Done. Have a nice day. Let me get out of here. Bye, guys. Oh, no, no, no. You have to do it formally. You have to tell me where it is failing. Okay. So remember, there are three conditions. Does the function exist? Is there a coordinate at negative one? Okay. Okay. Number two, does the limit exist at that spot? And then are those two values the same? So this particular picture, where is it failing? Okay, that's what we have to figure out. So condition number one, is f of x defined at negative one? And the answer is 100% yes, okay? We saw right here that at negative one, this guy has a coordinate at one, okay? So this is check, done, it's lovely, okay? It passes the first test. Step number two, the limit, does the limit exist? Oh, yeah, the limit does not exist on this one. Okay, so again, why does the limit not exist? That is because as I'm coming into my target value of negative one right here, my target value, and I come in from the left and I come in from the right, are those two values the same? Absolutely not, okay? So you would write down very formally why this is failing. The limit as X approaches negative one from the left, see how I put my little negative sign right here? Okay, from the left of F of X is positive three. And the limit as X approaches negative one from the right, see my plus sign right there of F of X is negative two. That means that those two things are not the same and that is where this guy fails. Okay, so yep, not continuous by the, the second part of its definition, it does not work. Okay. If it was continuous, like if it was continuous, then probably what would have happened is that this value right here would have been the same as this value right here. Everything would have been the same. Then you'd be like, yay, it's continuous. But again, you would have to write all of those pieces out. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, ladies and gents, that is it. That's how we do it, okay? So you're gonna practice some of these. Now your homework today, okay? What I decided because we're concluding this section two, I decided to give us a couple of practice problems on what we just learned about doing piecewise graphs and, and the idea of con continuity being continuous or not continuous and those three things that make something continuous. But then also we should go back and practice the entire lovely section. So you're also gonna do, um, pay, starting on page 862, you're gonna do the classroom exercises numbers one one through 11, okay? So this classroom exercises will review everything from section two, and then this part right here will really um, focus in on the stuff that we just learned in today's lesson. Ladies and gents, that is it, okay? 
this brings us to the conclusion of our beautiful um, section two. And so, yes, remember, we're doing bite-sized chunks so that it's more handleable. I really don't think your homework's going to take forever, but you're, if you're keeping on top of it, that's what I want you to do. I know APs start next week, and so you might be doing some AP work. So just doing manageable chunks is, I think, the best course of action for us. That's it, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, we'll have our fanfare music to get us out of here, and that's it. Okay, I'm going back inside, guys. It is warm out here. Sunglasses on. I'm about to close up shop. Bye, guys.